Today, I'm going to talk about DBMM, the relationship with Alpine Securities and the Kramers, and why there is a real case for multi-billions in short volume. Now, as we go down, we have to see the yearly chart, how this all came about, why we got involved, and then at the end, I will tie into how moving forward with the company. Now, taking it back to about 10 years ago, 2013, 2014, we saw 12.9 billion shares traded, and then the few years following, we saw multi-billions as well. Now, taking a step back, we have to understand the CEO has an extensive relationship between Alpine Securities, Scottsdale Capital. She knows the lawyer that fought for John Hurry to keep him out of jail. She knows the Kramers very well. I believe done business for 10, 20 years with them, actually fought in court with them and won. So there has been so many things that have happened behind the scenes and makes this story so appealing to me is that, hey, there was billions and billions of shares shorted and they were written off as zero right? That's a big deal. When you short a company, it goes bankrupt, you write it off as zero, you don't pay taxes. Now, the only issue is that liabilities on the books for any guys that know that never go away. They never go away. So now the company goes bankrupt. The CEO fights for years to get the company back above water, remove the blacklist, and it actually is now trading again on the OTC. So what happens to that short position? Now we could speculate whether it's billions, tens of billions, we don't know. But that is now accrued interest over this multi-year period. Now, what's going to happen? Well, someone's going to have to pay that interest, and it's going to be massive in my opinion. So right here, we see not only did the company go bankrupt, they're blacklisted, but so did the Asher LLC fund. So now it's not on the Kramers. Whose books does it go on? The prime broker, which happens to be Alpine Securities. So again, this is speculating on how large the short volume or short interest could be, but I think it's fair to say that Alpine is in deep water right now with the largest short being GTII. We saw that they can't afford to pay the fine with the SEC. Their lawyers just resigned from the case. There's so much madness going on, and we're going to get an update within the next week or so. So this really brings out a huge opportunity here for DBMM right? We see that there is a huge connection between two major snakes in the game, guys that have a huge history of just being toxic loan sharks, preying on weak and vulnerable companies, trying to bankrupt them and destroy them, which they actually were successful doing. Now, there are some issues that I must be transparent about. The first is with the CEO. Now, my initial thought was that I wanted to have her get on and do an interview with me, tell the whole story about how she started with the Kramers and everything, but she really didn't want to entertain that, had no desire to do so, and in fact, actually was a little ashamed, it seemed like, to have her name tied to the company or to even be associated with DBMM. So I thought that was a little strange, but I didn't think anything of it because, you know, we were fresh. We didn't really know each other. As it moved on months down the line, I had the opportunity to bring in a friend of mine to raise three to five million dollars, which could help their company grow exponentially. Now, any company in that position trading double zeros, I don't even care if your market cap was 10 or 20 or 30 million. If three to five million dollars comes knocking at the door for a fiduciary responsibility to your shareholders, you should be making that top priority. You should be running to that money and at least entertaining the offer. OK, we didn't get that. We got the exact opposite. She didn't even want to entertain it, was almost unappreciative of it was trying to discredit what we were doing or make it out that the investor was no good, toxic, and all that, which it's exactly the opposite. This person has a long track record of helping companies in a similar position as DBMM fighting against the Alpines, the Kramers, and the Lynn Globals. And we knew that to be a fact. So 100% on our end, it was clean capital coming in. And we knew that any company in this position to be offered that type of money, it should have been a no-brainer. But we knew that one of two things are wrong. It was one, she was just so disconnected from reality, just so out of touch with the real world. Or two, it was a big F you. And the reason why we think it was a big F you is we asked them, almost begged them for a couple of weeks to just give us a use of funds, provide us something that we can go back to our investor with just to give him something. Okay. And it was just ridiculous. It was ludicrous. They wanted to pay themselves. They wanted to pay off previous debt and other investors. It was just, it was out of control. It didn't make any sense. So again, that's why I thought it was a big F you there. 
Very strange because they don't have any other offers. They barely do 20000 a month in revenues. They're not growing. They're just staying stagnant. They have no business plan to grow. I don't even know what they do behind the scenes. It seems like they do a whole lot of nothing. Um, so it was, again, just very strange the whole way it went down is almost if like, we're too good to work with you. We don't need your money. We have all these offers. We're this you know big blue chip Microsoft Apple company, the way they wrote the structure of the deal out. And it's just, again, like I said, one, either just a big F you or two, so just out of touch with reality. Um, and it was just really unfortunate. So as it went about, that was, you know, just building up over and over and over again. And finally, I said, you know what, I just want to talk about this publicly. And I want to be, you know, honest about all the people asking, I didn't want it to go down this way. This was not my intention. I want to help this company. I think there's a lot of potential here, you know, just minus the short position, minus the Kramers and the whole story. This is a marketing company. This is someone that's helping their business grow. And I think it's really beneficial to have on my channel because this company could help not only businesses, but even content creators like myself, right? I I need to reach a wider audience. I need to grow my platform. So it's really unfortunate because I like the model of the business. I like the story. I like all of it. Um, unfortunately, um, when it comes to the executive team or specifically the CEO, she just seems like she doesn't want anything to do with it. She doesn't even want to be tied to the company. So with that being said, I'll leave you with this. I think you should resign. I think you should let Reggie be the CEO, make all decisions, grow the company the way it should be, and you can go about your business and do whatever you want to do. You don't want to be a part of the company. You don't want to be associated with it. You don't want to talk publicly about anything that's happened in the past. You don't want to talk about the shorting or the interest or any of the documentation. Why are you hiding? You can't hide as a CEO. We all know that. You have to be vocal in this day and age. You have to be honest about the shorting. We took bad loans. We took bad paper. This is how we're going to fix it. You can't be in denial to it. You can't be you know, ignorant to what's happening in the market or no one's shorting my company. That just doesn't exist in this world. So either you're stuck in your old ways and you're not able to adapt and grow with the market. Either way, uh, this is the unfortunate way I have to end this, but I am no longer going to be associating with DBMM. I'm no longer going to be posting any more content about them or answering any questions because I'm just simply not going to keep up with it anymore. If things change down the line and maybe we have better management or things change structurally in the company, maybe we could entertain the thought again. But in terms of raising them that capital, that deal is done. It is over. We are not moving forward with that. And again, I just don't see any other need to continue to do business with DBMM, especially the way that we were treated, especially the way that it was handled um, and the opportunity that came. No one else has given them this opportunity. No one else saw the value the way we saw them, especially at this price. So again, I think it was a big F you to the F you to our faces. And that's completely okay. That's part of business. That's called life. So um in this in this stage, you know, I am very young in my investing career. I'm hitting the ground running. I got a ton of fire in me. Um, and that's how business is gonna work. There's gonna be deals that don't work out. There's gonna be ways that you get screwed over. It happens. Either way, um, there's out of my control. I can't do anything about it, but I just wanted to be open and honest with you guys about the entire situation. Yes, there is still a real possibility of a large short interest, especially with Alpine and everything else going on behind the scenes, but I just personally won't be playing a hand in it at all. I don't own the stock. I have not bought it or sold it or anything in the past month or two. I mean, I don't plan on doing that in the future. So that is my two cents on DBMM. Any comments, questions, you can leave them in the section below, but this again will be my last video. I don't want to be answering any more questions after this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.